Hi, everybody, and welcome to the first episode of Pinstripe Perspective here on SNY. A look at the Yankees minor league system. We'll be joining you all season long. I'm Sweeney Murdy, and joining me as co-host for the rest of this season as we look at the Yankees farm is a guy who knows it pretty well from the upper levels, covering the Scranton Rail Riders for the Times Tribune in Scranton, is Connor Foley. Connor, uh, after the first couple of weeks of minor league action here, uh, what stands out to you about watching this edition of the Scranton Wilkes-Barre Rail Riders in the Yankee system? It's been, you know, it's been pretty interesting so far. It seems like there's, you know, consistent with the Yankee system, there's going to be really good pitching. That's kind of their calling card right now throughout the organization. Still waiting a little bit on the bats to come out, but it's only been three series so far, and they're playing in the Northeast. So they've had two snow outs, which can't be fun for hitters. You know, I figure that they'll probably, these next two series or so, they'll probably start to get the bats going a little bit more. And uh, and we'll see what we'll see what the whole team looks like. Prospects that people will be looking at all season long will mostly be the shortstops. So let's start with a couple of them right now. Anthony Volpe is the number one guy, and he got off a little bit of a slow start. But as you alluded to, uh, hitting in the Northeast is not always very easy, and everybody starting off the season might tend to struggle in these conditions. Yeah, and even though Anthony's a Jersey kid, he knows what playing in cold weather is like because he's dealt with it his whole life, but that doesn't make it any easier. Uh, just because you know what to deal with. So, yeah, he got off to a little slow start, a much better series uh, in his last one. I think he started to walk a little bit more, the strikeouts went down kind of. And also it's big to remember he's gonna turn 21 uh, just this week. So he's still very young for the level. He's gonna be fine. Oswald Peraza is a guy that if you talk to people who've watched him, he's very smooth in the field. He has a bat that plays, has some power to it as well. He's a prospect that I think people should be just as excited about, even though he's getting a little bit less publicity about it. For sure. And there's definitely some scouts that I've heard that, you know, almost prefer Peraza over Volpe. He's a level ahead right now. They're about the same age, not much of a difference there. And like you said, the real thing that stands out about him is just how comfortable he is in the field right now. It's a major league ready kind of skill set that he's got there. He's smooth. He has a really good arm. He's, you know, quick turning double plays and stuff like that. And that's refreshing to see sometimes, even though, you know, at the AAA level, the Yankees have had some really good defensive shortstops over the last couple of years. Um, but it's pretty impressive when it comes from a kid who's that young. Just a quick mention, you know, Jason Dominguez is a name that every Yankee fan who follows the minor league system knows. He's gotten off to a slow start too, but important to remember, he's a kid who's still just a teenager. He's still very young, getting his first taste of, of pro ball game action. And just like any other player, no matter how good a prospect you are, it's about the tools that you have and then kind of molding them into a game that sometimes just takes time. It's almost every game I see someone tweet that he hit a ball more than 100 miles per hour, which I think the Yankees will take that every time. He's also a guy who, you know, he started his career and then the world shut down. And so he lost some key development time. So he was returning to Tampa. He finished their last series back there again with manager Rachel Balkovec. So we'll kind of see, you know, just how quickly he starts to make those adjustments, seeing the circuit for a second time around. Oswald Peraza is the Yankees' number two prospect in the system, according to MLB Pipeline. Connor had a chance to catch up with him a few days ago. Right now, I feel really good. You know, I feel like I have a little control over my bats. You know, they're, uh, I feel like uh, they're balanced of bats. I have had a bats where I've hit the ball hard right at people, and that's really uh, all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to hit the ball hard, you know, somewhere. And uh, I feel like lately it's been working out that way. For me, you know, personally, uh, what I've been trying to do is last year I used to change my uh, approach with two strikes, uh, where now I don't. I'm looking to hit the ball hard. So, I'm, I'm, you know, even with two strikes, I'm looking to put uh, the ball in play hard. It's not just to uh, put it on play, but it's to actually hit it very hard somewhere. Connor, we've talked a little bit about Peraza's offensive potential. His hitting coach, Trevor Amicone, had something interesting to say about him too, didn't he? Yeah, when you watch Peraza, it's very quickly you notice that he's a really good contact guy. And I was talking to Trevor about how, how do you get those contact guys to not settle ju for just making contact and hitting bad pitches and not doing damage with those. 
And he kind of said it's, it's something that they actively teach all of the players in their system, but certainly Peraza is, it's very important for him to not allow pitchers to get him out because he's hitting a pitch outside the strike zone, just so he's not missing that pitch. You know, first at bat of the year, he hits a home run. He's had a four hit game this year. He won a game with a walk off double. He had another home run that was robbed of him, that was brought back. So, you know, how much better do his numbers look if he's got two home runs in 10 games? I mean, it's pretty much his first season at AAA. And now we turn our attention to a closer look at last year's first round pick by the New York Yankees, shortstop Trey Sweeney out of Eastern Illinois. Just so happens that the head baseball coach at Eastern Illinois is former big leaguer Jason Anderson, who is himself a 10th round pick of the New York Yankees and made his big league debut with them in 2003. Jason, when you think about the journey that Trey Sweeney has taken so far and is now in his first full professional season, what stands out to you and how excited are you to see his future? Uh, I, I, I think, I mean, we're all excited for him, but, uh, you know, just to see the process and, and to know Trey so well and just to understand how well he's prepared to handle what it's going to take to try to work his way through the minor leagues, which is no small feat. Uh, for anyone. Um, those bus rides are, are long, there's a lot of pressure and you get grinded down and uh, there's nobody more prepared mentally and physically than Trey is. And um, so it's, it's nice to see him have some early success. Um, he's still got a long way to go, but um, we're really, really excited about him. How soon did you guys know that you had something special in Trey when you brought him into the program? Uh, the first practice, um, you know, we, we brought him in as a freshman um, and we were looking for a shortstop and we knew he had talent, but we didn't really know what we had until the first practice. And so after about 45 minutes, um, we knew this guy was going to be a major contributor to the program. And um, we didn't realize we had a, a first round pick with the Yankees on our hands, but we knew he was going to be pretty special. Jason, you know what people like to do when they see minor league players? They say, OK, who does he remind you of? You had a very long professional career. You're a fan of the game. Who does Trey Sweeney remind you of? Oh man, you're uh, you're putting me on the spot. Um, I've heard a lot of people compare him to uh, LeMahieu a little bit as a left-handed hitter. Um, I think that's a really, really good comparison. Personality type, versatility, good strike zone discipline, can hit for some power when needed, but he's gonna be able to draw some walks as well. He's in a farm system now that has, you know, a bunch of really good shortstop prospects. How do you think he could handle that kind of competition amongst, you know, guys who could possibly be his teammates at some point? Yeah, I mean, that's the other thing we talk about um, is not worrying about what anybody else is doing. You know, it's a competition in the minor leagues every single day. You're competing, you know, you want to move up the ladder, you want to do well against the other team, but it is all competition and you have to embrace that. And I know Trey will. Um, it's not him versus those guys. It's Trey versus himself you know, every day that he goes out to the field. Um, and so, you know, when it comes to that, um, I think it's gonna be really interesting to see as he matures and gets older and what those other guys do, because Trey has that ability to go play other positions and really be a contributor um, to many different styles of baseball. And so um, that's gonna be a great luxury for him as he works the way his way up the ladder and and faces better pitching and sees what's happening at the big league level. Jason, thanks for joining us and congratulations on the success you've had in your program. I know you're going to be watching what's happening here. Thanks for having me. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. Go Yankees. And time now for a segment we like to call an alternate angle. A, 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 triple A. And if you're familiar with Connor's work during the uh, alternate site camp, you know that he will go to just about any length to get an angle on the story. Uh, his videos are still posted on his Twitter feed. Uh, I'm sure you can take a look at that. Manny Banuelos is back in the system. He's bounced around a little bit. He actually looked pretty good in the spring, and he's looked pretty good to start the year at AAA as well. Really good to start the year at AAA. And probably almost a little bit better than he looked the first time around uh, in his career. And uh, I remember talking with Kyle Higashioka in spring and asking if, you know, there were any differences. And he's like, not really. He said he caught him once when 
they were both coming up the first time around and Higgy said he was so good when he caught him that Higgy never had to catch him again until this spring training because he just zoomed up the levels and Higgy kind of took it step by step. You know, some of the pitches that he's throwing this year, change up, sliders, curveballs, guys can't touch it for whatever reason. And so it's pretty exciting to see Manny back. Well, this has been our first episode of Pinstripe Perspective. Connor and I will be back every two weeks. It posts every Thursday, every other Thursday on SNY.TV. And you can get a close-up look at all the goings on in the Yankees minor league system. Connor, this is going to be a fun look. People are always excited about Yankees prospects. And I think we'll be able to give them a lot of what they're looking for. Always excited about Yankees prospects. They get a ton of buzz. And, you know, whether they're going to help out the big league club or whether they're going to help the big league club get other players that can help the big league club always becomes a big storyline uh, throughout the season. Lots of special guests still to come here as well. So please join us here on SNY.TV. New episodes post every other Thursday as we cover the Yankees farm system top to bottom. He's Connor Foley. I'm Sweeney Murdy. Thanks for watching Pinstripe Perspective. <laughs>